we've already discussed the three components of the prediction error, but this decomposition was in terms of population expectations that we don't observe in real life. So in any given application, how do we measure prediction error? This is what this video is about. Let's go back to our definition of the expected prediction error here. And this was a mean square ex um, expression in population expectation. So we're going to try to mimic this in the sample, replacing the expectation by a sample mean. This will be a mean squared error but not using the population expectation, but uh, using the sample mean. So to indicate that, I'll put a hat on that. And we compute it on the training sample. Instead of an expectation, we have a sample mean. And now we're just comparing the observed y in the training sample to the OLS predicted values. And to remind you of uh, what these are, let me just expand this. You have seen this expression before. This is the least squares criterion function. So if I go ahead and replace these beta hats by generic coefficients B0, B1, Bk. Now if I wonder what values I have to assign to those to make this expression as small as possible on the training sample, then the answer is, of course, I have to choose these values. The training error measures prediction error in that it looks at differences between observed y and predicted y. However, we're here computing the uh, prediction rule and the predictions on the same sample, and in a second we'll see that that is a problem. So let's look at a different way of measuring um, prediction error. And this measure will be called test error. So remember in our definition of the expected prediction error, we were eliciting the quality of the prediction rule on an out of sample observation. So we're going to need an out of sample observation. Then to replicate the idea of taking an expectation, uh, we can use the sample mean, but that means we need more than just one out of sample observation. We need a whole um, data set of out of sample observations. So let's assume that we have such a sample and it will be called a and let's assume that we have m out of sample observations uh, out of sample out of sample the test sample is independent of the training sample it's completely new data. Now the test error is given by and now we have to remember we're taking a sample average over the M observations in the test sample and now we are taking the coefficients that we estimated in the training model and we're applying them to compute predictions um, predictions in the test uh, predictions on the test sample
Here we take observed features in the um, test sample, apply the prediction rule that we've estimated in the training sample, and then compute a predicted value and compare this predicted value to the observed outcome. That is the test error. We'll now discuss how training error and test error compare and it will turn out that training error is actually not a very good way of measuring predict, uh, prediction error but a test error is. So why do we want to measure prediction error? Because we want to choose a predictive model with a with a uh, low prediction error. So we want our measurement of prediction error to guide our model choice. Uh, and so what kind of models can we choose? We can choose to have less features giving us a simple model or more features giving us a more complex model. So we could have models of different complexity in this graph, we just put model complexity on the x-axis. So, yeah, if we're moving to the right here, we're moving into the direction of more features and greater complexity. And if we're moving to the left, we're moving in the direction of less features, less complexity. On the y-axis, we'll put error. Let's look at the training error first. We know that OLS minimizes the uh, training error. So as we add more features, OLS will choose optimal coefficients. And that means that the training error can never go down as we add more features. So therefore, a training error um, would look like it would be a downward sloping curve if we move from a model of low complexity to a model um, of higher complexity with more features. So it would look kind of like this. It would always go down and never go up. That would be the training error. Does the training error capture the um, prediction error? It probably does not because we know there's this component of the prediction error that penalizes uh, models of high complexity models with a lot of features. Right? So if as we move this way, at some, some point the variance component should you know, kick in and um, make it so that our error actually goes up. Because models here are very complex, very difficult to estimate, lots of estimation error, lots of variance. This is not picked up by this downward sloping uh, curve that corresponds to the training error. So the test error will behave differently. So a typical behavior of a test error would be to go down first, and at some point, the variance component starts dominating, it goes up again. So the, yeah, so this is the test error. And the test error is a good measure of prediction error. It captures both the bias component. This is why this is going down here. We have a more complex model. We're reducing bias. And it's capturing the um, variance component. So here we see we are adding unnecessary complexity and that increase our estimation error. And this is why test error is going up. So test error does not exactly measure, um, measure the expected prediction error. So depending on what kind of 
train sample we have, so see, even if we have very large M, we're always reusing our old training sample in every prediction. So there's some uncertainty from the training sample that even large M do not um, take away. So depending on how our training sample realizes, and if M is large enough, we will you know, get different realizations of the test error. Um, but they all, all look very similar, and on average, they will replicate the expected prediction error um, quite well. Let's summarize briefly what we learned about training and test error. So the training error does not measure does not measure the expected prediction error. It estimates the idiosyncratic component and the bias, but not the variance. The test error measures, in some sense, the prediction error. So um, this is what we want to use. So you might have been wondering where this test sample comes from, because in empirical practice, often you just have one data sample and you cannot, it's very difficult to add observations to it. So how do you get your hands on test data? And what people do in practice is that they take their ori original data set, and I'll represent this here by a rectangle, and then they split this sample into two parts and one part then they use as their training sample and the other they use as their test sample. Now that we have learned that we can use test error to measure prediction error, we want to use those um, kind of measurements for model choice. So based on this observed test error curve, the, um, the, te the prediction error is minimized at this level with models of this complexity. So that is the sweet spot. This is the optimal way of resolving the bias uh, variance by uh, the bias variance trade-off optimal bias variance trade-off if you are to the right hand side of um, this sweet spot then you're choosing a model that is too complex so it um, so you're buying a little bit of uh, of less bias but at the expense of too much additional variance so here you give it, the model complexity buys you a low bias but um, that's not actually worth it so you're fitting a model that uh, that fits too well and that is called over fitting. If you're on the left hand side of the sweet spot, then you are underfitting. So you're choosing a model that doesn't have a lot of variance, which is nice, but also um, it has very poor approximation um, properties and, and actually uh, it does not do enough to reduce bias. So now, 
remember here we learned about the bias variance trade-off that is inherent in prediction errors. We now we know how to measure prediction errors. So we have a empirical way of resolving the bias variance trade-off.